Well, welcome everyone to a new video. This is going to be a least two part series on the TensorFlow Magenta project. So if you're not familiar with this, I was looking through different projects that I could learn some more machine learning, maybe solve some problems. And I ran across this, it started at Google and it has expanded among a large community. And so in this video, I just wanna kinda of give you an overview of some of the tools that you can use to create some music and some art and drawings if, you, uh, if you're looking for something fun to do. So it's just gonna be a short video over a few of the projects I'm in. And then next video, I'm gonna deep dive into the code. So if you wanna interested in that, stay tuned for the next video for that. So let's jump in. I'll cover about five or six topics in this short video. If you go to magenta.tensorflow.org, you'll see the projects that are out there. And here's just a bunch of different demos. They give you an overview, they give you the code, and they even give you uh, an IDE that you can develop in and run for free. So I'll show you how that works. One of my favorites that I like is, is called Quick, it's called Quick Draw. And basically what happens is a lot of, it takes all these pictures that people have drawn and it analyzes them to a picture that, a picture that you draw and then it guesses what they are. So let's take a quick look. And then if you're interested, you could see the code behind this project as well by going to get started and then quick draw data set is right here. So let's go ahead. It's going to, uh, you're going to go through six different ones. I'll just show you a couple. So it says draw a spider and it wants you to do a short version. That way it has a basic version to compare it to. So if we just I see circle or blueberry or bracelet or hockey puck, I see flying saucer or sun. Well, I have no clue what you're drawing. I see an I see hula hoop or alarm clock or wristwatch or satellite. I see television. Sorry, I couldn't get it. Okay, I didn't draw a very good spider apparently. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see what the results look like at the end. Let's try the next toothbrush. This should be easier. Oh, I know, it's toothbrush. How did it know that was a toothbrush? <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll look at more of that. Okay, stethoscope. This should be fairly easy. I see nose, or moon, or circle, or necklace, or potato. I see wine glass, or balloon. Oh, I know, it's stethoscope. There we go. Crayon. All right, this shouldn't I be too bad. Or spoon, or hockey stick, or baseball bat. I see marker, or bandage, or toothbrush. Oh, I know, it's crayon. There we go. Door, that should be pretty easy. I see diving board, or skyscraper. Oh, I know, it's door. All right, scissors should be pretty easy. I see line, or marker, or spoon, or hockey stick, or string bean. I see fork. Oh, I know, it's scissors. Okay, so let's see, it got five out of the six, not too bad. Partly on my fault, let's take a look into why. Spider, okay, so I thought it was first close as a hula hoop. You know, this is kind of like charades for, for drawing. And so the computer machine learning is trying to match based on other patterns. And here we go, this is what I should have drawn. Yeah. I guess not close enough. All right, and if you are interested in the code of this project, just go back to here. There's uh, the data set and here's the GitHub for the code that you can take a look at. The next one is you start drawing a picture and then it predicts what it is and then finishes it for you. So let's just, and here's the different, in this, in this menu, select the different ones that you want to do, then it loads the module and then now you can start drawing. Okay, so let's go ahead and start drawing a cat. And there it goes, it's gonna finish drawing the cat. Not too bad, yeah. All right, and we'll go back here let's see info yeah and there's the code so have fun with that one hopefully you find that one fun the other thing i wanted to show you is the collab notebook this is uh, really a good useful tool it's free it combines the runtime environment which is your gpu cpu and 
it runs, you can run this on the server side, it's free. It also combines the IDE, so it's like Juniper Notebook that you can use within your browser. And it also has the code, similar to GitHub, right within this one notebook. And this is through the collab, it's free, and it's, uh, it's really a great tool. So let me show you a little bit of that. And this is probably what I'm, this is what I'm looking at doing for the next week's project that I'll deep dive into the code. But if you go to demos, and then you look at collab notebooks, you can see a number of notebooks here that they've already done. And essentially you open it and it's just like a Google doc. You can make your changes and it'll save as a Google doc. And what you do is you run each one of these modules here. So set up environment and you can see up here and it's connecting to the GPU or the instance with the necessary hardware that you can run this code on. A good example that you can use to reverse engineer, create your own and experiment with. So this is, uh, this is probably what I'll be looking at. Okay, one other example is, so there's TensorFlow with Python, there's also TensorFlow with JavaScript. So let me show you that one real quick. It's similar to this collab, but it's through glitch.me. And you can get to it, you get to it the same way. Let's go get started. Under, uh, yeah, all the Java developers. So let's look at this one. Hello Magenta. And this, so it's basically similar notebook. It has the runtime here and the code. So it shows you here. And then you can go in and change it if you want. If you want, let's say change the pitch. So that's one uh, thing you can do is you can use this code to do some of your own if you're uh, more comfortable with JavaScript and TensorFlow, or you want to experiment with TensorFlow with JavaScript. So that's mostly the tools I wanted to show you. I want to show you one other useful TensorFlow tool. If you're looking at TensorFlow, most likely one of the most common models is a neural network. And I'm just going to throw this in here because it helps you get an understanding of this as far as how to visualize a neural network. And if you want to use this model in your, in your project, this is a great way to get a, a better understanding and grasp of how it works. So over here, you basically pick the data set. And so for example, this is an easy one. You have orange and blue and you want to classify the differences between orange and blue. So I'm just going to run this with the default neural network and it should, it should run and solve this pretty easily because as you can see, there's a, they're uh, pretty easy to classify the differences. So yeah, as you can see, it ran there pretty quick. But if you pick a much more complicated data set, such as the spiral where you have a mixture, it's going to be harder for the model to pick out the differences or highlight the differences in blue and orange. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to play around with this and you may want to add some uh, extra neurons and you may want to add a couple extra layers and then uh, run it this way and see how it does. And it, it, it really depends on time. You don't probably want it to run too long, but maybe a minute or so, and it should be able to start classifying this. So let's just give it a second to run and see how it does. I think this is going to need some adjusting. It's doing okay. Now it's starting to struggle. As you can see here, the it's starting to capture the blue, starting to capture the orange, but it might be maxing out. I don't know what you can do. And then you can hover over each one of these. Let's go ahead and stop it. Each one of these and see what each one of these neuro networks did as far as the layers. And then you can go and adjust the different weights if you want. You can try that. Uh, you can try uh, different models, activations. So it's just a fun tool that if you're going to get into TensorFlow, maybe uh, use neural networks in your Magenta project. This is a great way to get more background on how it works. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned next week. I'm going to build on this, hopefully make a collab notebook and share what you have done. Maybe this project inspires you. Maybe you've already done this project. I'd love to hear about it. Maybe some other people would like to know more about it and paste your comments in below and hope uh, we'll see you next week. So long.